Hello, here's a Houdini tutorial on lines, curves, and edges, and it'll help you better understand them. I was bad at this a long time, and it caused a lot of pain in my modeling, and I'm finally understanding it a little more, so I want to share with you guys. So let's get started. I will go over the ways I create splines in my projects, and I have a specific way I do it, and also the new curve tool in Houdini 19. We will get to that. But first, let's let's clear out these quirks that Houdini has just so you get a better understanding of how they work in Houdini and um, let's get started on that so first of all there's a really strange thing in Houdini when you create a straight line and you try to poly extrude it you'll notice I'm moving the, the extrude distance and nothing's happening and that's because Houdini has a problem with something perfectly straight so to demonstrate, we're going to add an edit node here. And if I move one of these vertexes, oops, I did my mistake. Let's try this again. If I move one of these vertexes, you'll see the poly extrude. It, it starts to work like so. But uh, when I delete this edit node, it's back to not working. So if you ever have this, just a quick fix might be to put a transform node, pick 0 0.0, and just put a really small number, one that won't be noticeable. I guess if it's too small, it won't work. Just like that, and then it, sh it should get going. Another quirk is, uh, in another application, you might think, oh, like, I model this curve and I model the circle, and if I merge them together, I should be able to poly extrude it. But the circle's not cut out. And a lot of applications will do that, so you might be used to that. In Houdini, there is a whole uh, node just for this purpose. So if you just put right here, it will create the proper edge here needed to treat that correctly and give you that hole. It's very useful. One thing I noticed, I didn't have this resample here, and when I use this hole, you'll see my point count. It's very non-uniform. And it wasn't like that up here, as you can see. So I don't know why I did that, but I added a resample, and it seemed a l just a lot happier uh, doing the, the work for that. So I hope that helps you. Next one we have is, let's say you want to you take take edges from a geo and make them curve. So what I did here is I just selected a bunch of uh, edges manually in this group. I used the dissolve button and this checkbox to create curves when dissolving boundary. And it says boundary, so it might be only meant for boundary use, but and it, you don't see anything here, but if you press W to see the wireframe, you see that the wireframe is still there. And then you could resample that and then poly extrude it but you notice it does a terrible job and a uh, big thing for that it could be the way poly Houdini treats edges they're not really there they're more like part of the primitive and because there's two primitives here it's likely duplicating that when I dissolve non-selected of that edge group and that's why we have kind of that extra compli complication here but to fix this, there's a polypath node, which just cleans up the edge uh, and makes it all better. And you want to put that before you resample, like so. Because it'll clean this up, and then the resample will do a better job. And now it, you can see it looks a lot better. Alternatively, uh, you should really download the Side Effects Labs tool because it's free. I'll give you this toolbar, and whenever you type in labs, you got all these tools. And one of these tools are edge group to curve. And that just takes the edge group I created, and it just makes a clean curve already, which uh, is, is really awesome. And another tip you may need is, let's say you have this, I created this line, I moved it, I moved it here and then I merged all that together. And then I used Fuse to 
of a high uh, snap distance, which you know, you'd hope fuses the points. And you could see without it, there's two point numbers, and with it, it does fuse it into one point number. And then poly extrude that up, and then you'll realize it's doing a really terrible job. And what you need, it still doesn't treat it as one curve, so what you need to do is create a join node. And then as you can see, it's treating it as one curve now, and then we could click wrap last to first, and now it's extruding it correctly. So that's important to know that one there, because the fuse alone will not do it for you. All right, now the different types of curves, um, so I'll just go through these and how I use them. So line, uh, I just create a line, pick a direction. I try to put as few points in here as possible because I don't plan to modify that ever. And then here I'll do an edit node and make a very quick shape. This is just to like block it out to where my geometry is then this is my starting point that's why i'll never need to modify this because even if my geometry changes i'll be able to mod modify it later on and then there's a really useful node here called resample and what that does is adds extra points depending on the length of the spline so as you can see if i take this line and i lower the length the point number changes to respect the, the level of detail uh, I want. Like here I have a lot more points than I have here. So it keeps the level of detail accurate. And uh, th that's really good when you're working because you never want like really tiny two lines to have a hundred points where the big ones only have a hundred, right? Um, so then I would here you could click subdivision curves and it will smooth it out for you. But sometimes it smooths it out more than you want it to. Hold on, I'm just gonna move these a little more to show better. So it, it really smooths it out because that's so few points to work with. So what I would normally do is keep this on straight edges and we could lower this Oops, I mean raise it. If you raise this, you'll get less points. And then we can just add another resample node after this and use this one as subdivision curves. And we can lower this lower. Now it keeps the shape better, uh, but it still smooths out your corners, which is, which is really great. Alternatively, if, you, if the edge points cannot be moved, you could also resample by polygon edge. That way, if you do it here, see how that moved it in a bit? So let's just do it here. And you can see that point will always stay in that location. Even if I move this. Whereas without that, it will just average it and try to smooth it out. Uh, so that's the resample node. And then usually around here where I add more detail, I would put another edit node. And this is where all the future changes I make and the fine details of moving it in place in my scene would be. And depending on your scene, you may uh, you may have multiple of these and that, that's totally fine. That's, that's up to you. Um, so that's one way I've been doing it and that's kind of before Houdini 19. So now in Houdini 19 we have Curve Tool, which I'm going to be using a lot more of. It's, it's really good. So I'm going to go to the top viewpoint, and here you can simply click to, oh, I'm still in the edit mode here. I'm going to just escape that. And if you don't see any options up here for the tool you have selected, you always have to click this show handle button on the left side, and that will kind of give you all these options up here. And these are the two main ones that you need up here is drawing and selecting. So here I'm just gonna, if you just click to make the points, I'll make a hard edge, or if you hold, hold down the button and drag it out, it'll drag out a bezier handle for you. So we can do that, make our little shape, like so. 
And then if we click the select points button and you can select these, there's a really cool feature here called create rounded corners. So if you click that after you've selected your points, you'll get these little like dots that just appear near your points. And if you just click and drag one of these, you can drag out a smooth kind of bend. And this is similar to what you'd find in real life if like someone was doing brake lines and they had to pipe bend all the pieces. You'd, you'd get kind of corners like that more so than uh, the smooth kind of wobbly ones, right? Uh, so that'll be very useful for your hard surface modeling. And that's pretty much all the ways I've been making spines in Houdini has kind of been able to make a lot of shapes. Actually, there's one more. Let's just do test geometry rubber toy. So we can, we can make edges from our meshes. And let's just turn off these points. And to do that, I, I kind of showed a little bit earlier, but to get into more detail, sorry, we create a group node. And here we just select this to edges, like so. And under base group, we can just click this arrow up here and then manually select edges. But there's a nice hotkey. If you hold A, it'll let you drag out a, a loop, edge loop, and it'll get there as the nearest way it thinks is possible. And if you hold shift, you can just kind of keep drawing out the different edge loops till you get the shape you want. And, and that's very useful like that. And then here, we're just gonna use the Titan Labs edge and then use the Labs edge group to curve tool. And then here, we just pick the group that we created. And another very useful tool, I went on over more of these, is actually the polywire or sweep, and that's to make geometry from your curve. So polywire, like so, and we could increase the divisions, decrease the wire radius, like so, and it'll kind of create, create our little outline there. Alternatively, uh, what's a, I think a better tool, but maybe more complicated than you need is the sweep. Because in sweep, you could, uh, right now it's using the surface shape as your second cross section, which is here. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll just do it really quick and we'll just pick round tube. And we can lower the radius as well. And here you get a lot more options. Um, you could compute UVs. Oh, it's doing a really bad job, actually. Oh, I'm not sure why yet, but um, let's just put it onto here. Yeah, let's just test it with that. I'll figure that out later, why that's not working. And this just lets you kind of get the UVs going as well. And uh, tends to not blend it correctly, but there's a way to probably fix that. How did, I forget how to do that now. I'll have to cover that in another tutorial, but um, generally it does the job pretty well and gets you that outline. So you just get more options than you do with the polywire node. Yeah, so that's that's the different ways to do that. And next we'll just touch on the add node. Right here. So in add, you have options like delete geometry, but keep the points, which will delete all the geometry. And you can see the point numbers here as well. Um, they're, they're not ordered right now, so this tool will also let you construct a spline based on the points. And you could go by group. And you can see it's trying to, to do a good job, but it's kind of guessing how to do it. Like it's going from three to four, from six to seven on the point numbers. And, and if the points are accurately laid out in sequential order, it usually does a good job. You could clo create close spline, or you could have some kind of pattern and also by attributes. So there's a lot of complicated things you could do with that um, later. 
uh, but it, it might be useful on, on what you're doing with splines as well. Um, okay, and that, that pretty much covers my understanding of splines. I haven't used the new curve tool yet because it is in Houdini 19, so this polywire is not really working on it right now. Um, but I could add a polypath here. Oops. Yeah, so I had a polypath and it's working well. And you can see the UVs are quite good now as well. And I'm going to try this on a sweep node. And yeah, the UVs are looking good. Where if I reduce, move the polypath, it's got those messed up UVs. It must be part of the new feature of the curve tool. Maybe they'll fix it later. I'm not sure what's going on that right now, but Houdini 19 is quite new, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure all that out for you guys. And thank you for watching the tutorial, and um, I hope this is useful. It would have been for me if, <laughs> if I didn't just start modeling and just dealt with these as they came up. So I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. T have, a, have a good day.